stuff. Let's talk about something a little more interesting. Chris, you brought this to my attention earlier today, and I thought it was a fascinating idea. Yep. Let's talk about college coaches as NFL consultants for this year. So, obviously. So, um, yeah. so the NFL, if college doesn't play, so if all this stuff goes kafunk, all right, which, which I now think after seeing the statement from Tom Mars, I believe lawyers are going to ruin this just as much as anybody else has. It's 100%. fine. Um, if we don't play, what are these coaches to do? Because these guys are not really good at sitting at a lake and fishing. They, you know, going, going and relaxing. And we're now asking them to relax for months and months and months. Okay. These guys eat, sleep, and breathe football. The NFL is a great place for a lot of these top tier coaches and real innovative coaches to um, get hired in as consultants. And yeah. I think this could be really kind of crazy for the NFL and shake up the NFL a lot. I also think it's going to give some college coaches a little taste of the pros and we'll see if a few of them decide to jump ship or not. Well, there, there is uh, Zach Smith, you know, the former uh, Ohio State assistant, all that kind of mess with Urban Meyer, whatever. Uh, all of that, he believes that Ryan Day could be tired of this whole college issue. Yep. So and, and he could I, go I, on to be an uh, NFL head coach. Yep. So I, I think I thought I got a couple of teams and a couple of coaches that just stood out, and this is just – off the top of my head, okay, I haven't put more than five, ten minutes of thought into this, but I really enjoy it. First, my Patriots, um, to piss everyone off, there is no doubt in my mind, his BFF, uh, Nick Saban, would, would come help run the defense. And who I think Josh McDaniels would call is an old friend of his. Josh McDaniels reached out to Dan Mullen when he drafted Tim Tebow back in Denver and said, how do I learn to play with this guy? And I think Dan would be the perfect guy to go up to new England and help Josh with cam. I, I think so as well. If it's not so. jo if it's not, if it's not Dan, then we got a real all in the family kind of situation. If he goes and gets Gus. Oh, that, that was, and that we was have my saving first and Gus working under the same roof for a year. Put a camera on it. Oh, I would love Sell it that. to pay per view. So oh, I'd HBO. love that. It'd be unbelievable. Um, hey, by the way, on this topic, um, let's see, not Joseph Gomez. Uh, Damien said Jim Harbaugh to the Bears. Hell yeah, let's do it, yep. please. Yeah. So, so I've got a couple perfect. for the Bears. I got a couple for for all these guys. Okay. So Harbaugh, Harbaugh to the Bears. Definitely could see that. Um, you're the 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 most obvious and easiest one out of all of them is Jerry Jones just throwing a metric shit ton of money at Lincoln Riley. Oh yes, and and saying, hey, just just come a couple miles south, hang out down here, hang out McCarthy, with Mike McCarthy. Yeah. McCarthy better tuck tuck that asshole up. <laughs> this this boy right here might take your job. Things gonna get a little heated there. Um, I I think it would be wise for my guy Matt Rule down in Charlotte to bring in a couple of guys that that are helping innovators. His offensive coordinator, also my guy, um, Joe Brady, has yeah. only had a full time job once, and it was last year, and that was his first full time job ever. And now he's the offensive coordinator for an NFL team. Um, so names that I like for the Panthers to bring in would be like a Mike Leach or a Gus. Malzahn, an offensive hey, guru. No, 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 no. Don't even go that route. Bring in Steve Insminger. If LSU's not playing, bring Insminger up there with Joe Brady. They obviously have oh, a really yeah, good working be, relationship. That that would be a fun thing. I don't know that Steve Lute leaves the state of Louisiana very often, though. Yeah, but See, if you're a the consultant, thing, you the can only do it guys Zoom. that I worry about, like I wonder how much of this all happening would lead to Saban retiring because he doesn't take one of these NFL consultant jobs. And he spends a lot of time on the lake, and he realizes, I don't want to go back to that bullshit. Look what we just went through. We got a loaded team. We're heavily recruited. We're picked to be good again. We think we can win a national championship again. And it just all got taken from us by a bunch of bureaucrats who don't know shit about football. Yeah. I think it would be real easy to say, I'm out. Okay. Ryan I mean, he's, Day, he's got same a new, thing. He's got a new grandbaby at the house, so. 
I yeah, mean, Ryan Day, the same thing. Head on down to Cleveland. They got a new coaching staff. They got a new offense that they're trying to put in. You know, it, I like Pat Fitzgerald going either to Chicago or this would really upset all the Chicago people, but going to the Packers where his former uh, athletic director is now a GM there. So, uh, and then somebody should probably be reaching out to your PJ Flex and your Jeff Brahms and just your yeah. offensive innovators. Yeah, I, I agree. I with think that. it would make the NFL a lot more exciting. Oh, a lot I agree. More I agree a hundred percent. I hope it happens. I hope all these NFL coaches get bored and say, you know what, I'll come be a consultant for you. Yeah, yeah. All the, all the college coaches for NFL. Yeah. Yes, all the college. That's what I meant. Yeah, I Did, think I think we could get some really cool pairings, and. You know, I, I think a lot of these guys might get the NFL bug. I could easily see Harbaugh oh, yeah. saying, I'm not I'm not dealing with this crap anymore. I was really good in the NFL. I'm just going to go back and do this. There are too many bad coaches here. I think Lincoln Riley would say, I, I don't know if it's worth the headache. You know, yeah. Saban could easily just say, I'm not, I don't think Saban would go to the NFL. Yeah, no, I, think I think Saban would, he would say, um, it, this isn't worth the headache. Uh, and it's amazing that all those top tier coaches that win all the time, would get a call. You know who's not getting a call out of all those guys? Ain't nobody calling Dabo. Ain't nobody calling oh, yeah. his dumb ass because he don't do anything. Well, I mean, he's, he's he and Ed Orgeron are very similar, right? They're both CEOs, and they are both incredibly good at recruiting and for riling up their team, right? Yeah, and, but, the, but, but they're good but, at being CEOs, and that's yeah, you know. okay. It it is a it is a defensive specialist. Yeah, but he's but he's not a defensive coordinator. Like I don't no, know that he necessarily. But he's never been one, but it doesn't matter. He, he 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 brings a lot of value on defense. Can, uh, I mean, like a scary a lot of value on defense. Yeah, no, he it, as far as the defensive line goes, like he knows technique. He knows that's yes. LSU always has a good defensive line. But Everywhere they did he's ever before been. him, but yeah. they did before him, but he's he at least has a specialty. I, yes. I don't know that Dabo does anything well outside of hire really good people to just do their job. Dabo was a wide receivers coach. And how good were the wide receivers at Clemson? Uh, they're pretty good. I mean, no, they, not now. How no, no, good no. Like, were uh, they when under, he was a wide receiver coach? Under him, yeah, they were they were pretty good back then too. I mean, you're talking Sammy Watkins and all that kind of mess back then. I mean, it, you know, he was like, the head coach for Sammy Watkins, but but it was recruited as a wide receiver guy. They, they, look, he they didn't coach. He didn't coach Sammy. He didn't coach Deshaun Hopkins. <laughs> I'm not going to say that he didn't coach those guys. He don't do nothing. Dabo was a good wide receivers coach. He wasn't he wasn't the best in the world, but he I, he was pretty good. Uh, but no, they're probably like he's probably not getting he's not getting called. Well, he won't, get, he won't get called. I just wanted to take a shot at him. But so, anyway, no, I'm with you. A uh, hey, Tommy Jarvis jumps. At, well, first off, Darren McCardle said, "Will the college downfall uh, cause or or will uh will the college downfall uh, affect the NFL at all?" And and that's what we're talking about is if they end up with some coaching help. So it'll yeah. affect the NFL. In I I think the draft next year will be one of the craziest crap shoots we've ever had. Oh, a hundred percent. I think, I think you're and and here's what's sad. This is really sad. If we lose college football, the last, so la yesterday I brought up Joe Burrow, but the last three number one picks were guys that might not have gotten drafted at all. If they did, they would have been late round draft picks. Okay. Yep. And all of them, their final year of football played their way to the number one pick overall. Yeah. They changed their life forever. From one They changed season. the history of their family forever because of one great season. And we're not going to have that. Ha whose life just didn't get, you know, put on the fast track? Because we all assumed Tua would be number one. We all assumed that these great other quarterbacks that have great names that were good for years would be over. No one knew who Joe Burrow was. No one was talking. Everyone was talking about Sam Darnold and, and Joshua Rosen, all these other guys. Nobody was talking about Baker two years ago. Yeah. Or three, yeah his, his, his junior year. No, well, I mean, they were, they were talking about him, but it wasn't like first round quarterback, you know, whatever. Oh, not it close was, to first round, yeah, like not it, close to first round. These guys might have gotten drafted. But well, they would have gotten drafted. I think they all would have gotten drafted. Maybe not Joe. It, the well, other two would have gotten it, drafted, but it would have been late. They would have been flyers. It, man, Kyler Murray wouldn't. Uh, Kyler Murray would have been playing baseball. Kyler Murray, you're damn right. Kyler Murray would. Yeah. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Kyler Murray would not be in the NFL right now. Yep. 
if it was not for that one season. That's the way That's it goes. That's right. Uh, and, and, yeah. Go ahead. So, uh, just it, it's not playing is going to affect some people in a big negative way. No, you are, you're exactly right about that. Tommy Jarvis jumped in on Facebook. He said, uh, Matt, how much did you have to pay for that top fan page? <laughs> I've been here since day one. I can't get no recognition. I should be a top fan, damn it. Uh, I don't know how the top fan thing works. I think that Huey has just commented so much over over the past few months that he is now considered a top fan. Uh, but come in and comment more often. So that's that's all I'll tell you, Tommy. Like I, I think that's actually how that thing works. Uh, yeah, I don't think not, watching. I'm not really sure how the algorithm on Facebook works. Yeah, no idea. I mean, we're we're on four different platforms. Yeah. I don't know how any of them work other than maybe Facebook and or not Facebook, uh, YouTube. And even then, like I, you know, I've got guys that are apparently blocked on Facebook that. I don't know how to get them unblocked. I don't know. Uh, Joseph Gomez said, Peter Schrager brought up more of a mentor program fit the college coaches, and maybe that leads to a more minority hiring. Um, yeah, I mean, it, don't forget that we've also got the thing we talked about with Mike Loxley last week, which is the, what is it, the National Coalition of Minority Football Coaches. Um, yep. You know, that that's still a thing. Um, let's see. Uh, Huey said, Tommy, I had to do unspeakable things to get it. <laughs> Just ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, Matt Miller said the XFL should get going again and try and sign some of these college players. Zach Smith and Antonio Brown should have a podcast called Mindless. Um, that'd, be, that'd be kind of funny. I'd, hey, I'd like to listen to that. It'd be, uh, it'd I, be would not, I would not give them one download ever. Uh, Matt Miller said maybe Tom Herman and Zach Smith can repair their relationship over some Magic City wings. I heard they're magical. Darren McArdle said would Steve Spurrier help out? Uh, I think Spurrier's done. I think he's done coaching. I think he is on the golf course as we speak. Uh, <laughs> well, not now. It's too late for him. He's he done played eighteen today. <laughs> Damien said, "Wait, what? Did he just say Patrick Fitzgerald to the Cheeseheads? Damn it! Where's my tequila?" And I know, I know, you don't like that. I know it's not good. He's got a connection there, and they've drafted a lot of Northwestern guys. Yeah, I'd want him to go to Chicago. Yeah, no, I'm with you. He don't have to move. He don't have to leave. He just, you know, the Brown Yeti jumps in. He said, "What's up? What's up, Brown Yeti?" So we got a, we got both of our Yetis in here. That's good. And uh, Matt Miller said, is top fan like OnlyFans for older, beefier men? Yeah, I think it's something like that on Facebook. I'm not sure exactly how that works. <laughs> All right, let's jump into uh, 